Paul. Hi guys, how the devil are you? Going for my Christmas walk. You can see my flats behind me and the river down to my right. Decided, Christmas day, go for a walk, not a long one. Just to get out and about, bloody freezing mind. Would have been nice to have some snow I suppose. Anyway, I hope you're all having a lovely time. Family and friends and nice presents and food and wine. Or whatever you do over this time of the year. Um, I had some sad news the other day. I, um, because my mum is in her seventies and vulnerable, of course, um, to pneumonia and things like that. Um, I decided to do a lateral flow test before I went down to visit her in Gainsborough in Lincolnshire or nearby anyway and um, and it was positive only a faint line but positive nonetheless so I booked in the next day for a PCR test got the result this morning positive obviously it's Christmas day now it's far too late to to travel on trains or anything like that or any public transport um, you know Christmas Day Boxing Day everything's shut all the transport stops um, so even if I was negative it would be far too late now to, to do anything about it so what I uh, the um, the strangeness about it all if you like is that for about three weeks now I've uh, had snuffly nose and, and runny nose um, about three weeks ago in fact I, I continued going to work through what I thought was a cold um, and I, I just had to take a couple of days off in the end um, and for those couple of days I was flat on my back you know almost like flu which I don't think I've ever had before really um, could, could barely do anything to, to please myself. Um, sore, achy, sunken eyes, sore throat, cough, um, a little bit of shivers, hot and cold. Um, and uh, but that only lasted a couple of days, and then since then I've had a kind of a, a, a like a lingering cold, if you like, um, which I don't usually uh, get. I'm pretty immune to those sort of things, touch wood. Um, but this time I got it, and it's partly my fault, I guess, because um, because of bad bad lifestyle choices for a few weeks. You know, uh, not eating properly or eating at the wrong time of day, not sleeping very well, um, maybe drinking too much. Um, you know, if I'm completely honest with myself. And, uh, and that probably didn't help it at all. And to say that I was surprised that I tested positive is um, partly weird to me, but I kind of I, I had a sneaky suspicion. I, I don't know why. Um, but it's weird, isn't it? Because, you know, I've been going to work since, since my couple of days of, of um, the terrible days that I had weeks ago. I have been going to work, some people have neg are negative, some people are positive. There was a group of uh, blokes in the pub one night and the next day one of them t texted in everyone saying I've tested positive, other people got tests, were negative. Um, my boss and her daughter uh, have done lateral flow tests when I told them my result and they've tested negative, you know, I spend a lot of time with them. So it's just weird, you know. Um, is this PCR test or the lateral flow test? Are they too closely linked to cold or flus, viruses? You know, um, can they be can they be triggered positive by those? Who knows? It's it's a big mess. It really is a big mess, and and I can't put my finger on it. Um, I'm no scientist by any means, but when you try and listen to as many reports as possible from different professionals, 
um, and the uh, vacuous um, explanations that we get translated through the politicians and the governments. Um, who knows, you know, who knows what the truth is, how it's spread, whether the tests are uh, reliable or not, lateral flow or PCR tests. Um, does the disease exist at all? Is it just cold or flu? Is it just a variety of it? You know, all these questions pop into your head and at the end of the day you've just got to say, ah, oh, fuck it. I don't understand any of it. I don't care. As long as I'm healthy and uh, surviving on this planet, that's all that really matters to me right now. Um, as a result of all of that though, um, the advice obviously is to, um, to isolate, self-isolate for 10 days it used to be, although uh, I think the, uh, the new regulations say seven days. Um, I certainly got two text messages this morning, one saying that I had to self-isolate for seven days and the other one saying 10 days. So even the text messages that I got back to back are disagreeing with each other about the length of time I've got to stay alone. Uh, absolutely crazy. Um, I th they, what's probably happened is they've changed it from 10 days to seven and not updated their, their second text that they send you. Uh, the second text um, being one to remind you to join the NHS app, which I'm not going to do. Um, I'm not going to share my details with them. Um, so that they can contact everybody that you've been in contact with, probably using your phone's uh, location um, devices, um, and warn them that they might have to self-isolate. Well, I work in a pub, you know, I'm not going to do that. Thousands of people uh, will then be contacted um, erroneously over Christmas. This is all a big mess. Anyway, I'm going to I'm going to do as they say, and at least seven days, I'm going to uh, keep myself to myself, apart from getting out and about on this lovely little jaunt that I'm on on Christmas Day. Um, I'm not going to come to, into contact with anybody. I'm not going to into going to go into any businesses or shops or pubs or restaurants or anything like that. I'm not going to meet anybody or snog anybody. So you know, I'm getting out from my daily exercise by myself. So that leads on to the second thing that I wanted to talk about, really, which is. Um, Happy Christmas Mum and Steve and Jen and, and Jake and Lucy, um, you know, all my family and anyone else that I've missed, um, hope you have a lovely day and obviously I can't be with you today but um, and you know through one reason or another again the same thing has happened as last year, our family has been disjointed and um, unable to all be together at the same time. But it will happen, I'm sure it will happen next year, hopefully. Touch wood, fingers crossed. Um, you know, things will have died down a whole lot more and those things will be possible. To be honest with you, I'm quite glad that I didn't actually travel um, on Thursday or Friday before Christmas because it seemed that um, the National Rail Service was struggling due to um, staff sickness and people pretending or otherwise to be sick from um, these kind of symptoms and um, and so the, the, the very few trains that were available would have been packed which isn't ideal in um, disease circumstances so you know I'm quite glad that I didn't go all the way down there just for a few days and, and risk it risk it for a biscuit um, so I'm gonna don't know where I'm gonna walk today um, you can see the river Irwell sluggishly winding its way through Salford down there um, and I don't know which route I'm going to take I'm going to follow my nose as I'm wandering through Salford I just noticed that over there over the, uh, the railway wall Semex do you remember that from my, one of my previous videos I was walking through the industrial heartland of Liverpool docks and saw a cement factory there I didn't know there was one here too useless fact I know so although I'm on my own um, today for Christmas Day um, I'm gonna be fine I I've got uh, plenty of food in I've got a freezer full of food if necessary and I've got some nice treats to have as well um, picked up a couple of bottles of wine so you know I'm gonna be fine um, and 
you know, when you live by yourself, you're kind of used to that anyway, but um, my heart goes out to all the other people that are by themselves um, this Christmas, you know, people with no family or friends, uh, no relatives, no cards on the dressing table, um, or the side table maybe I should say, you know, it's, uh, my, my heart goes out to all those people, all the forgotten people that, um, that probably think that nobody cares about them. I care about you guys. My heart goes out to you. I feel for you. Um, I know what it's, I know, I've been alone for 10 years. I've been single now and living in my flat and um, it can feel really strange sometimes when you, you come home from work, you know, um, especially when you work in a, a bar like I do and uh, and you come home and there's nobody it's just you and the four walls um, nothing, nothing to entertain you no one to to keep you happy to chat to you or just to be there in the background um, family friends wife husband whatever girlfriend boyfriend um, it's it's difficult it, there are moments of intense sadness especially when you know that there are other people who you've just been chatting to in that bar for example that are going home to families or dogs or cats or loved ones or kids you know and uh, it can be very difficult and it's made even more raw I guess at this time of year when when you know that everybody else is doing that and, and having even bigger family get-togethers and aunts and cousins and aunties and I've said that already, um, the uncles and relatives, you know, as much as sometimes we, we hate or can't, we, we, uh, what we do, we dread this time of year when all the relatives come round and um, as one comedian said, um, uh, Christmas is a time of pigs in blankets, or as, as you would call them, relatives in the spare, spare room. Uh, and so, you know, if you if you do know somebody like that, send them a text message, give them a call, um, try and remember them in your thoughts at least, and uh, and so that we, you know, we're. We're a, we're a community, we're a community animal, humans, and we do all like time on our own, but um, when it's forced upon you and you have no choice, um, that's when we need to be uh, um, thinking about others and, uh, and just take a moment to remember that, that's all I'm saying. One of the uh, hardest things for me when I found out that um, I, I was going to be positive for COVID um, was knowing the fact that I was going to go and stay with my mum um, who lives by herself normally um, and that she would have to spend Christmas Day by herself um, but thankfully, thanks Jen um, my sister is uh, looking after her both days and uh, so I know she'll be well catered for by the way um, Talking about pigs in blankets just made me uh, think of what I'm going to have for dinner later. And um, um, a new experiment, I've uh, in the past when I'm making um, like a full English breakfast for myself, because I'm sometimes such a lazy git, I'll wrap the sausages in bashes of bacon um, and slice the black pudding and everything else and just put everything in the oven, you know, instead of spent doing loads of pans or frying it all and uh, doing all that so I'll just um, put everything in the oven maybe apart from the eggs but you can even bake the eggs in the oven as well if you've got little dishes um, 10 minutes I would recommend for those instead of 25 30 for the rest of the ingredients um, <clears throat> so huge sausages with bacon wrapped round huge pigs and blankets and uh, my my new venture that I'm going to try tonight um, is I'm going to include, before I wrap the bacon around the sausage, I'm going to um, slice up some dates, um, 
and some blue cheese and then wrap the bacon round those. See how that goes. I'll let you know, maybe take a picture. Happy Christmas, gorgeous. Hope you have a lovely day. Yeah, I'm looking at you. Weird that someone is uh, driving some kind of train on Christmas Day. Maybe it's the only time they get to clean the lines or something or whatever that machine does. Hope you're getting paid a lot of money per hour, mate. Can't see what it says. Something real. Must be some kind of track cleaner. So I've just been, um, as I have rejoined the Irwell now, and I'm following it down into the uh, into the basin where it uh, goes out and expands out. And keys, the Salford Keys, um, and I'm reminiscing about the last year and what's it involved for, for for me and for everybody else in the world. Um, and. I suppose from a personal note, personal note um, it's been a been a bit of a year you know um, we thought last Christmas um, what was a bit of a bugger uh, when it comes to you know everything the COVID restrictions and everything that we've had and um, the furlough scheme and and reflecting uh, I suppose I just want to say um, you know, my, my dad died in early January, and uh, rest in peace. I, ho I hope you find peace, Dad. Um, and you know, that's in a way I I'm thankful because it was kind of that event that that triggered me into um, making more of my YouTube videos, and um, and now it's expanded into countryside meanders and uh, 60 second short clips uh, moaning about this that and the other you know as well as well as these riverside walks and um, so I'm, I'm grateful you know um, grateful that, um, that that you pass in um, in inspired me in a way to to try and offload onto a video um, some of my thoughts and explore things you know there's not necessarily find answers but sometimes you can find you can find peace just by exploring things and that certainly helps me um, and I hope in a way that if my videos do ever get watched by more than 27 people and um, that you know it helps other people too um, it inspires people to come to terms with uh, all sorts of manner of things you know like the um, for example the, um, the um, mental conditions that afflicted my dad uh, narcissism and all that kind of stuff go and watch the videos if you want to know more about that um, and you know but be prepared to, to watch an hour video because some of my early ones were an hour long I didn't know how to edit, how to make it more interesting, and they are you know, a little bit long-winded, shall we say, but I think I'm getting better at that. Um, and also inspire people to, to get out and about into the countryside, or even just by the river. Get out and about and explore the world, and always be curious about what's around the next corner. Um, so I, I'm grateful for that, you know? Even if I, I only ever have 
27 or I think it's 28 subscribers now to my YouTube channel um, I'll be grateful for that and that's 27 or 28 people that um, you know that I wouldn't have reached with my thoughts otherwise and what would be really amazing is, is if um, it picked up a little bit and people made comments and we, they were, they were, we could interact and have more of a community discussing some of the issues that I talk about um, or reveling in and enjoying the the places that I've been to on my walk um, but you know I'm getting off topic there so um, rest in peace dad uh, and as I said I hope you found peace and um, from whatever was to tormenting you through your life um, and then it's been uh, a roller coaster of furlough for me and then being made redundant from a job that I've done for 10 years and uh, done loads of training in and very much enjoyed uh, teaching uh, English to foreigners and then becoming a teacher trainer and who knows I might pick that up again one day as well who knows but in the meantime um, I walked out of that job into the, um, the pub to control myself and was offered a job there and I've been there ever since so again I'm very grateful grateful to uh, to Carmen for giving me the opportunity to uh, carry on working and um, pay my mortgage and put a roof over my head and food on my table etc etc and for the community of people pubs are a very community based uh, place you know lots of people go there to um, obviously to have a beer but also to socialize and to interact and um, especially for single people like me, you know, like I mentioned earlier, um, to a place to feel camaraderie and friendship and warmth and, and love, almost like a home from home. And if only, like I've said in my dating video, um, more women would do that, because it does tend to be generally single men um, that, that go to the pub to, to do that. And uh, I'm sure there would be a lot more um, people forming couples later in their years if women stopped drinking wine at home with their friends and watching Netflix and actually came out to the pub um, but anyway that's, that's, that's again going off on a tangent um, another thing that's really inspired me this year is um, despite all the authoritarian rules and regulations that we've seen coming in across the road uh, the world sorry um, and um, you know riots in different countries because of uh, COVID regulations and um, lockdowns and enforced vaccines and all sorts of other um, draconian measures that have been put into place um, to try and control the people it seems not not control the virus the virus is at best uh, a bad cold um, and lots of people die from loads of other things every year as well you know not just cold and flu but diseases and um, insect-borne things and poverty and starvation and uh, buildings collapsing and natural disasters there's, there's thousands of different ways that you can die and why is the world so fixated on um, just this one virus and um, without going into too many details here of course because I have explored those in other videos and will continue to, to do so um, but I've been um, my, my heart has been warmed in a way by um, the resistance against this you know the resistance of the almost Orwellian um, routes uh, paths that some governments and authorities are going down in order to control the people, not control the virus, they don't care about that. Um, and, you know, and you can see why some of the conspiracy theories thrive, like um, some people think that it's because they want to, the disease affects mostly the old, they're the ones that are more likely, most likely to die from it. Um, it's a the global reset, you know, people, uh, the, the powers that be, um, and I don't mean the governments necessarily in that case, but the people above them, um, who are controlling the way that the world goes um, want, want to lose the very expensive, costly elder generation um, and maybe this is a way to do it. You can see why conspiracy theories like that um, exist and, and survive and thrive and um, 
and um, who knows I, I like to keep an open mind about all of that but the the thing is I'm that I've noticed over the last year is that but I'm, I, I don't agree with rioting and, and injuring people and de destroying property um, per se but I, I'm certainly grateful and um, um, emboldened by the fact that such a large percentage of the general populaces of countries, of general populi, who knows, um, of countries across the world are just saying no, no we've had enough, we're not going to put up with that. I just had a uh, nice cup of tea out of my flask. That was good. Just sat down for a minute in the um, Castlefield Basin. Not many people around, just occasional walkers, dog walkers, occasional jogger. And uh, I will um, wrap up this little video now. Um, before I go though, I just wanted to say Thanks to everybody that has um, supported me this year. Um, um, work colleagues and uh, family and all the subscribers that, that I've got. 28 I think it is now. And um, thanks for watching my videos, taking the time to do it and put up with my, my amateurishness. amateurishness. Um, and you know, many more to come hopefully. Um, uh, so thank you for anyone that's, that's watched and liked the videos, it does help um, and I know all the YouTubers say that but it, it does help because um, the more and more people that see my videos on YouTube um, the more likely I'm going to be able to build it up into um, a, a source of income for myself so I, I am grateful to everyone that's um, that takes the time to subscribe or uh, like and comment if you want to that would be really good um, and I do have a, a Kofi account where anyone can buy me a literal or imaginary coffee um, and every little helps as well towards that I'm grateful to the people that have um, done that this year um, a special thanks to James and Milena who contributed a very large generous amount thank you and uh, I'll be putting that to good use um, initially I was intending on getting a, a gimbal um, to make my videos a lot smoother um, as I'm walking around and I've come across all sorts of problems with compatibility because I've got a Nokia phone and it seems that the only phones that are completely compa compatible with the best um, gimbal, which is the DJI Osmo 5, I think, um, are Apple phones and some other Chinese or Japanese phones. Um, so I'm, I'm still working on that. And who knows, they might update the software so that it is compatible with mine in the future. In the meantime, apart from the the obvious vibration that we get because I'm on the end of a selfie stick here 
on lots of my videos and um, the other issue that I've come across is wind noise and it's probably affecting this video even now and um, so I intend to save up a little bit more and buy a microphone system so that um, you know with dead cats and all sorts so that so that I can reduce that substantially um, again I'm looking at DJI or, or um, not Bose the other brand anyway that I'll flash on the screen um, that seem to be in competition with each other right now um, so I'm, I'm looking into that they're a little bit more money uh, but I think that's what I intend to do until at least the gimbal situation is sorted out so there you go thank you everybody um, it's been a topsy-turvy year um, but we've all survived and uh, you know um, I look forward to next year we're getting out and about and the day's getting longer and spring coming in a few months time and you know hopefully it'll be 2022 will be a good year for all of us and uh, I wish you all well and um, happy new year thinking back on the year as well my, my heart also goes out to Terry I am a good friend from the pub and may you rest in peace and um, to Terry Flanagan's family and son Pete um, I hope uh, you can find peace um, because he was a great man and will be sorely missed and uh, I certainly miss his uh, sense of humour and, um, and friendship um, sitting having a pint with him rest in peace my friend and one last thought um, I'd like to send my commiserations to um, the family and friends of Jethro, a fantastic comedian who just died a few days ago, earlier this week. Um, you filled my heart with joy and laughter on many an occasion and will probably continue to do so. Um, and I was uh, very, very uh, honoured, privileged to, to have been bought tickets by my brother many, many years ago to come and see you. And uh, and raucous laughter did, did ensue. Um, so rest in peace, Jethro. Um, you put a little spark of happiness into my life. Uh, take care, everyone. See you soon.